Hi, this is Stacy Gray, an undergraduate researcher in the Cone Lab at the University of Florida. In situ hybridization is a very common laboratory technique used to study prenatal development. The purple staining that you see in these figures here is an example of what the finished product of in situ looks like. As you can see, the staining takes on a very specific pattern. But why is that pattern important, and how does it work? When a new gene is discovered, the first step to figuring out what that gene's possible function in the body might be is to ask, what happens when the gene doesn't work? Sometimes when you have mutations in a gene or in similar genes, they are associated with certain kinds of birth defects, like hypospadias or polydactyly, shown here. If a mouse with a mutation in just one gene is born with paws that look like this, then you have your first hint as to what role that gene might be playing. But what you still need to ask yourself is, what is the gene actually doing during normal development of a perfectly normal embryo? Just like humans, mice only have about 24,000 genes total, and at any given time only some of those genes are even being expressed. When a segment of DNA or a gene is on or being expressed in a cell, it's being transcribed into small strands of RNA, which are what provide the blueprint for protein. When a gene is off, no RNA is being transcribed and thus no protein produced. A gene could be off because that protein is no longer needed, or maybe it's not needed in that particular part of the body. During embryonic development, genes are constantly being turned on and off, at different times and in different places along the body, a perfectly timed orchestra of genetic mechanisms to go from this to this. So what we need is a way to look inside the embryo at various points in gestation to look for the presence of RNA. It isn't foolproof, but the presence of RNA for a gene in a certain part of the body is a pretty good indicator that that gene is doing something there. To do this, you need a specific probe. Here's where we make use of the fact that RNA, unlike DNA, is single-stranded. A probe is just another single strand, synthesized in a laboratory, which is complementary to the RNA of the gene that you're looking for. Here's a mouse embryo taken after 15 and a half days of embryonic development essentially frozen in time. When the embryo is put into a solution containing a probe specific to the RNA of the gene of interest, the probe finds all the places in that embryo where the specific RNA is present and hybridizes to it. Hence the term, in situ hybridization. Lastly, the probe must be chemically labeled with something, whether it's a radioactive label, a label that fluoresces under UV light, or a label that can be detected by an antibody, such as this one. With a label to tell you where the probe has hybridized, you can look at the embryo under a microscope and see where, if anywhere, that gene is turned on in the embryo. And so you're one step closer to learning what that gene is doing.